Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. For all integers a and b, a minus b is an integer. Now in this series, we are using a list of 10 axioms for the real number system. And I'll leave that list of axioms in the description below. Now, axiom four tells us about the existence of the real number zero. And axiom five tells us that every real number has a negative. And we have for all real numbers x, x plus the negative of x is equal to zero. Now using the concept of the negative of a real number, we define subtraction so that given any real numbers a and b, we define a minus b to be a plus the negative of b. And also in regards to the negative of a real number, we have proven the following results. We have proven for all real numbers x, the negative of negative x is equal to x, and we have proven the negative of zero is equal to zero. Now, in our real number system, we have defined the positive integers as a subset of the real numbers. And from there, we defined the set of negative integers as follows. We define the set of negative integers to be the set of real numbers n, such that negative n is a positive integer. And from there, we defined the integers as the union of the set of positive integers, zero, and the set of negative integers. And at this point, we have proven for all integers a and b, a plus b is an integer. And now here, we're trying to prove the same thing, but for subtraction. And before we get into proving this theorem, we are first going to prove a preliminary result. We're going to prove the negative of any integer is an integer as well. So to prove this, let's first consider an arbitrary integer n. And from here, the whole goal is to show that the negative of n is an integer. And to do that, we're going to split this up into three cases. Now, by definition of the integers, since n is an integer, this tells us that n belongs to at least one of these three sets. In other words, we have n is a positive integer, n is equal to zero, or n is a negative integer. And in all three cases, we're going to show that the negative of n is an integer. Let's start with case one, where n is a positive integer. Now, according to this result, we know that n is equal to the negative of negative n. So because n is equal to the negative of negative n, we can substitute n for negative of negative n. And that tells us negative of negative n is a positive integer. But now, going to the definition of negative integers, if we take n to be the real number negative n, well then, it is true that negative of negative n is a positive integer. That's what we have here. So this tells us that the negative of n satisfies the requirements to be a negative integer. So negative of n is a negative integer. And also, by definition of the integers, we see that every negative integer is an integer. So since negative of n is a negative integer, this tells us that negative n is an integer. And so we're done. So this completes the case n is a positive integer. Now let's move on to the case n is equal to zero. Now let's note that the negative of zero is equal to zero. Now since n is equal to zero, we can take this equation, substitute this zero for n, and substitute this zero for n. So we have negative of n is equal to n. And we know that n is an integer. So this tells us that negative of n is an integer. So we're done. Now let's move on to our final case, where n is a negative integer. Well then, by definition of the negative integers, since n is a negative integer, this tells us that n is a real number, such that negative n is a positive integer. So negative n is a positive integer. And also, by definition of the integers, we see that every positive integer is an integer. 
So since negative n is a positive integer, this tells us that negative n is an integer. And so we're done. And so putting this all together, we have shown if n is any integer, then no matter what, we have that negative n is an integer. So we have proven exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And now, using the fact that the integers is closed under addition, and using the fact that the negative of any integer is an integer, and using the definition of subtraction, it's going to be easy to prove this theorem. So to start out the proof of this theorem, let's first give ourselves two arbitrary integers, a and b. From here, the whole goal is to show that a minus b is an integer. Oh, maybe I should write down the lemma that we just proved. So by our lemma, since b is an integer, that tells us the negative of b is an integer. And then, using the fact that the integers is closed under addition, well, since a is an integer and negative b is an integer, that tells us a plus negative b is an integer. But by definition of subtraction, a minus b is a plus the negative of b. So since a plus the negative b is an integer, well, this equation tells us we can substitute a plus negative b with a minus b. So we have a minus b is an integer. And that is exactly what we wanted to show. So we have shown if a and b are any two integers, then a minus b is an integer. So this completes the proof. All right, and so another way of saying this is to say that the integers is closed under subtraction. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.